Have you ever wished that your house was the place your friends loved to gather, but you hesitate because your house is full of kids and homeschooling materials and honestly, it's kind of a mess? <laughs> Today's topic is messy hospitality with the very relaxed, very hospitable Maureen Whitman. <laughs> Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. Hi, I'm your host, Lisa Maladnik, and today we're talking about messy hospitality with Maureen Whitman. Maureen is a wife, mother of seven, and grandmother of seven and counting. We up to date on that, Maureen? <laughs> Uh, yes, we're at seven. Right <laughs> that's, that's the perfect biblical number. Uh, she is also co-editor and contributing author of A Catholic Homeschool Treasury, The Catholic Homeschool Companion, and Why Should I Learn This? She is the sole author of For the Love of Literature. Maureen, along with Walter Crawford, is co-founder and co-director of homeschoolconnections.com. She is grateful for all the homeschool parents who helped her over the years as she works to give back to the community through Homeschool Connections. Maureen's house is just one of those places people love to gather, and she welcomes you to visit her at homeschoolconnections.com. Welcome to the, to the podcast, Maureen. It's always so good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here with you, Yeah, and as this always. Is Oh, yeah, we always have fun. Um, no, and we, this is a great topic, too, even kind of for us, because I think we're favorite. of the same mind about this, <laughs> and our listeners are probably already nodding their heads in recognition. Why don't you start off by telling us what you mean by messy hospitality? Well, you know, I love entertaining. I love having friends over, and, you know, in our homeschool group, we were always hosting everything, and, and our friends would always, you know, tell me, oh, you know, we're so grateful that you're doing this, you know, and and, uh, you know, like it was some big burden or something. And I was like, no, no, you don't understand. Like, it's easier. I don't have to go anywhere. I'm happy <laughs> that people come to me. So, you know, we always called it messy hospitality. But a few years ago, there was an article uh, written by an Anglican priest, um, Jack King, called Scruffy Hospitality. And it was making all the rounds and everyone was was passing it around and sharing it. So I want to share what he says in that original article from 2014. Um, but it was really good. And I think it describes it well. So what Jack King says is Scruffy Hospitality means you're not waiting for everything in your house to be in order before you host and serve friends in your home. Scruffy hospitality means you hunger more for good conversation and serving a simple meal of what you have, not what you don't have. Scruffy hospitality means you're more interested in quality conversation than the impression your home or your lawn makes. If we only share meals with friends when we're excellent, <laughs> we aren't truly sharing life together. And I would add to that, if we only share meals when we're excellent, we would never do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Right. You know, when I was single or, you know, before I had kids and I, and I love to entertain. Yeah. I could make perfect me. Well, not perfect, but close to perfect meals and have close to perfect home. But once those kids start coming and once you throw in homeschooling to the mix, you know, it, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And that's the reality <laughs> of it. And we, we just struggle so much with what other people think of us. What's going on with that? Right, right. You know, right. We feel so judged these days. And or maybe it's always been like that. But I think a lot of it's just modern media. You know, we, we see all these picture perfect homes, picture perfect families, you know, on Pinterest, TV, magazines, uh, billboards, what have you. And I think we forget that, you know, those things are airbrushed. They're not real <laughs> and they're not really attainable, but yet it's come to be expected of us. So we need to just get over that at some point. <laughs> yeah, uh, I always go to the spiritual. It's just the way my mind works. And I think 
If I were a very clever spiritual enemy, I would want everyone to be so afraid of not making a perfect impression that all the goodness and the love that God it wants to pour out through them would be stymied. It would be like stuck behind a dam of fear. Yeah, that is perfect. Yeah, that is <laughs> such a good explanation, right? I mean, because Jesus calls us to serve, right? I mean, and and there are you know, there's scripture tells us about hospitality. You know, we, we need to serve the person at our door. And yeah, I, I think you're spot on right there. Yeah. So is it possible for us to homeschool and have a perfect home? Um, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe the question is, <laughs> is it possible to have a joyful homeschool and a perfect home? Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are people who have perfect homes and are able to um, you know, also homeschool and, and kudos to them. It's not possible for me. <laughs> I can't do it. And, um, you know, I want a joyful homeschool. I want, I want children who love learning. I, you know, one of the reasons I homeschool, I mean, there are many reasons, but one is I, you know, I want my children to have a great childhood. Mm. I want my child, my children to look back and say, I had the best childhood ever. And they do say that. I mean, my daughter got married, you know, um, another daughter, the maid of honor got up and gave her a little speech. And she said, you know, we had this great childhood. So, you know, that doesn't mean letting everything go and just running crazy and have kids hanging from the trees. And <laughs> <laughs> right. But it, mean, mm-hmm. it, it does mean that things don't have to be absolutely perfect and that we can be joyful and in, in serving others, joyful and having a tidy but cluttered house sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's what's attainable. Having a perfect home school and a perfect home, yeah, it's a little harder to do mm-hmm. <laughs> and keep <Yeah>. your sanity. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know you mentioned to me the other day when we were talking about this that there was kind of a watershed moment where somebody came into your yeah. not perfect house and said something <laughs> to you, and it really helped. It did. It did. I had a friend I know I was really close to, and, um, you know, we were both starting out homeschooling at the same time and, and figuring all this out, right? And, um, and I had her over one day and it was kind of one of those after church, hey, come on over. Let's, you know, the kids hang out for a little bit and have fun. And so the house wasn't perfect. And she said, you know, Maureen, I just love coming to your house. It makes me feel so much better about my own house. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, thank <I> mean, you. <laughs> it, it sounded kind of like a snide, but that's not how she meant it. And right. and and it, it was, you know, I took it as a compliment, you know, mm-hmm. that, um she didn't feel like she had to be perfect, that she could just, you know, after mass come over, she didn't have to have perfect makeup. The kids didn't have to be dressed perfectly. You know, um, we could just enjoy each other's company mm-hmm. and not have to worry about everything being in the right place or looking like a picture out of better harms, homes and garden. Right. Right. And I think we're also living in this tension between wanting people to see the good of homeschooling, like the people beyond our homeschool friends, so that when they right. come to our homes, they don't think, oh, gosh, this is a disaster. It's everything we're afraid it might be. Like, we really kind of are protective right. of what we're about. I mean, what is it like for you, like when you have priests or extended family <laughs> visit your home? What's that been like? Yeah, so that's funny you say that. So we <laughs> I had one time this years ago. Oh my gosh. I had seven little kids underfoot. You know, my youngest was probably one and the oldest was 12, 13. And so um, a friend of mine's friend who was a priest stopped by the house. He had to get something from our neighbor and the neighbor left it with me to give to the priest. And I totally forgot he was coming. <laughs> and so we have this thing we call the five minute tidy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Before I love my it. husband comes home from work, we do the five minute tidy, right? And and get the house looking nice for him. Well, father came like right before the five minute tidy. The oh. house was <laughs> I mean, and not dirty, but like toys everywhere. And you know, because when we homeschool, right, when you have little kids and you're homeschooling older kids, it, it, it's not possible, right? If I if I was trying to keep the house complete immaculate all day as I'm homeschooling, I would just make myself crazy. 
I pretty much, my style was let the little kids have at it, play with toys, pull all the books off the bookshelves, whatever. And when we're done homeschooling, then we just write many hands, make light work. The big kids, all of us, we work together and we get everything back on the bookshelves, toys back in the bucket, what have you. And, you know, just for us, that's what worked. We're working at home at our homeschool, you know, usually at the kitchen table, an area that's tidied so you can think and work. But, you know, rest of the house, you know, the kids are getting snacks from the kitchen. It might be a little trash. So father comes. I open the door. I'm like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> come on in. And he comes in and I'm like, let me get the keys. And I'm thinking he's going to stay at the door. No, he follows me in and he's stepping over toys, trying to get through my living room. And I'm just appalled. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this man must just think Mm. I'm insane. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I can't keep house. I'm a mess. Well, the next day, my neighbor, John comes to me and said, father, John, they're both named John. Father, John, was really blown away by you. He came by and said, and he told me, oh my gosh, that Maureen has it so together. She has all these kids and she's homeschooling and the kids were joyful and they're happy. And she wasn't stressed. She was just had a big smile on her face. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) He was impressed. I was appalled. So I'm like, okay, you know, it doesn't have to be picture perfect. What people want to see, right? They want to see joy. They want to see, they want to have good conversation. They want to, you know, they want to connect mm. with you. Yeah. yeah. Was- and, and that two, <laughs> two things come to mind. And that is, there's a man with spiritual sight as well as human sight that he yeah. sensed all the good that was present in that home and it lit him up. And the other thing is that we can often assume people are judging us when they may not be. I remember the right. first time my friend Stephanie, who is the, the best kind of type A, an incredibly generous person, perfect yeah. house, amazing teacher. And the first time I came, Charlie and I came to visit her and her husband and all our kids were just babies. Um, and she said, I didn't clean for you. <laughs> and, I was, and we gave each other a huge hug because I knew we had we'd crossed a threshold that our friendship was now in a place of trust. And that meant a lot to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and some people, it's hard to let go of that. I understand <laughs> that. I mean, you know, for some people, it, it's they need to have everything tidy and in its place. And that's how they're wired. Yeah. And, um, you know, what we're saying here is we're just giving you permission to let it go a little bit. And, and not to stress over it, that people aren't judging you. And if you need to do it for yourself, that's one thing. But if you, you need to do it for others, um, you know, you know when, when I'm not talking about living, you know, in a, in a trashed out house, right? I mean, um, you know, you don't want things to be so messy or too scruffy that people can't enjoy your home. Right. Right. So, you know, maybe a few guidelines. Um you know, it, it means making sure you have food, but it doesn't have to be Food Network perfect, right? It doesn't have to look like Alton Brown came into your house and made dinner. Um, you know, you have to make sure you have hand towels in the bathroom so they can dry their hands. But, you know, they don't necessarily have to match. In fact, I have a friend who told me, she said, whenever I entertain, I take the dish, the hand towel off the little thing and I kind of scruff it up on purpose. So people aren't afraid to use it. Oh, it's like when I, I notice when I have like that. the perfect hand towels in the bathroom, like matching lined up with no one takes them off. They're afraid to use. Mm. <laughs> so she always takes one off and kinds of messes it up, you know? So we That's want people so to smart. feel welcome. Yeah. 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 I mean, you want to make sure the floor is picked up. So father doesn't have to step over all the toys. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't fall and break his neck, but <laughs> It doesn't have to be pristine, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you want to make sure there's toilet paper in the bathroom when company comes, but, you know, it doesn't have to be Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need to make sure that there's a comfortable place for them to sit. You know, maybe pick the books up off the sofa and the couch. But, mm-hmm. you know, again, it doesn't have to be, you know, the perfect lazy boy couch either. So I think that's what it comes down to is, you know, hospitality is, you know, what, what is hospitality? It's making people feel welcome, feeling loved, it's serving people. And uh, so you have to be mindful of that, but it doesn't have to be picture perfect. 
Yeah, and we don't want them to feel like, as your friend pointed out with the hand towels, like they're in a museum and they can't touch anything. It's a home. Right. It's a lived right, right. in I mean, place. You know, we've all been invited to that home where you walk in and everything's so perfect that you're just kind of anxious to leave because, right, you're sitting there stressing out, what if my wine glass tips over? Or, you know, they probably want to vacuum up all these crumbs I've dropped on the floor. I need to probably go. <laughs> right? You don't want people to feel like that. You don't want them, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Make them comfortable. Yeah, exactly. So um, are there ways to kind of incorporate hospitality into the way we're homeschooling our kids? Can that be part of their education? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, yeah, I think so. You know, like one thing, you know, I always loved about our homeschool community, and, and I imagine that most homeschool communities are like that, was there really was a sense of hospitality. You know, when we first joined our homeschool group, I was six months pregnant. You know, I had never really been part of the homeschooling community before. I connect with these women. Well, when my son was born, there was a meal train. Like, all these people are bringing me meals, like, every other day for a couple, two, three weeks. Wow. I didn't even hardly know these people, <laughs> right? I'd oh. been in this community just a matter of a few months. Um, I was in my third trimester when I joined this group that blew me away. It just, I never, you know, I'd been in the workplace with my first two kids. I worked full time, became a stay at home mom, you know, and then when our third baby was born, we lived up North in the middle of nowhere. Um, so this was something totally new to me wow. and it was really a beautiful thing. And so, you know, I made sure, you know, when other people had babies or crises in their life, I always joined the meal train. And, and what a good witness to our children, right? They helped make the meal. We package up again. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know, one time I didn't realize we had just joined the homeschool group. Mom had a, her baby like a month after me. And I made um, this Italian meal and took it to her. And someone pointed out to me later, you know, she's from Italy. <laughs> 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 like she move. makes her own sauce and everything. I'm using ragu. <laughs> but that's hilarious. She was grateful for my meal and and um <laughs> you know what a great witness to our kids. So, you know, I, it's good for our children to to see us opening up our homes, whether it be for maybe the homeschool club meeting or mom gatherings, whatever. Um, you know, and they can help prepare for that. You know, I mean, kids can help cook the meal. They can make the snacks. It's going to take them three times as long, you know, than if you make it. <laughs> it's not going to look perfect. Mm -hmm. But these are homeschool moms. And you let them know, hey, Billy made the made the snacks. And, you know, everyone is grateful to that. And it gives that child a sense of accomplishment. Um, it helps them to know that serving others is valuable, that serving others is um it's a good thing. Work is a good thing, right? No matter how simple the work, it, it, it's good for you. So, yeah, you know, and you know, like I said, you can do the five minute tidy before everyone comes. The kids can help get the house tidy. Again, don't stress them out, and it doesn't have to be perfect. But you know, you want it to be comfortable for everyone to come and sit. Is it hard to train kids to to help out around the house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, in the short term, yes. But I think long term, Lisa, I think it's easier. And I think it's better, right? Because if I'm training them up when they're little, it's more natural as they get older. And it's it's expected of them. I think you're probably, you know, going to have a harder time with teenagers if you suddenly introduce the idea of they need to be doing dishes or sorting laundry, what have you. So, you know, they can start with small things, you know, like, you know, I was getting overwhelmed with laundry with every new baby. And my husband one day said, why aren't you engaging the kids, Maureen? <laughs> mm. So, you know, I wasn't about to let my six-year-old put my, you know, colors into hot water in the washing machine. <laughs> but they, they could all sort the laundry. I mean, down to two years old, they could grab their clothes and, and put them in their drawers or put them on hangers and they could help sort. You know, they can. On Saturdays, we had... Um, or Saturdays was our day to do, you know, kind of the big chores. And I had a list and they could check off things as they got done. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know about two years ago, I, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Maureen. 
I was going to say about two years ago, I read a study that said um, small villages in certain parts of the world where everybody needs each other, everyone has a a role to play, like this one grows the weed and that one makes the butter, that sort of thing, where everyone feels needed, there's no depression. Like they have no cases of depression or virtually none. Like it's so good for our children to know that they're part of a team and that their help is required. Right. I mean, you you know, you read these studies about depression, they they say things like working in the garden helps depression. Well, why is that? I mean, part of it may be that you're getting sunshine, right? Vitamin D is important. Something about your hands in the dirt. But I think it's also work and contributing and and you have the fruits of your labor. Um, Work is important. And and, and it does help. It does help our psyche and and everything else within us. And I think they're probably going to be do better in their schoolwork, right? I mean, if they see that work has fruit to it, yeah. 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 Um, so are there any ways to kind of make the training fun? I know you guys have your five minute tidy, which to me is kind of fun. It's nice to have a deadline because then they know in right. five well, minutes like, it's over. Five minute tidy, who can, right? It's like a contest. Who can get the yeah. most done, right? Dance yeah. coming because, you know, we want the house to look. I mean, you know, he'd come in, it could be a mess, it'd be fine. But, you know, we want to do that for him, right? That's a gift. So, yeah. yeah it, I'd set the timer. We'd see how much we could get done in that time. And it's kind of a race. It's kind of a competition. <laughs> you, know, you have to do it joyfully. It's not like, I'm going to get it done right now. It was more like, hey, and I'm helping. So that's, I think that's really vital is, you know, if you just sit in a chair and command children to do things, it's no fun and they're not going to do it. But if you're in the middle of it, doing it with them and you're racing with them and competing with them, it's totally fun. You know, mm-hmm. um, I always think back to when I was a kid, I loved doing dishes. Um, and that's just because my dad, again, doing them with us, not telling us to do it. And he would sing songs and whistle and play. We'd play like little math games or word games. Like he made it really enjoyable. Wow. What you a know, great dad. Yeah. Yeah. My dad's a really a person of service. I always say, you know, that's probably one of the things I inherited from him. Like if you go to my dad's house, he, you know, and, and my mom's passed away, but, um, he would sit you, he'll sit you down, right? And and probably have an apple pie in the oven and wow. <laughs> you'll get you a drink. He's gonna, he's gonna, you know, serve you. And that's what Christ calls us to do. And you know, his house isn't perfect, you know, but you always feel loved there and always feel comfortable there. Yeah. To that, to that point of service, and I think this is a really good point. When my daughter was about Maybe, well, but from the time she was a toddler and we could talk to each other at all, I taught her <laughs> that if she was going to have a friend over, she could anticipate the person arriving and there was a toy she wasn't ready to share because it was just after her birthday or Christmas. Yeah, she had to yeah. put it away because the guest came first and, you know, that it was should be all about making sure that person or if it was multiple people that everybody was having a good time. It wasn't about what she wanted to do. And so by the time she was four, I remember um the mother of a, an extremely spoiled child came to me and said because that her she brought her daughter to our little birthday party and she said i cannot believe what i'm seeing brianna was so nervous about coming to this party where she might not know everyone and teresa walked right up to her when she walked into the room introduced her to everyone said hey this is brianna everyone and immediately guided her into the game that they were playing i I couldn't believe that teresa had taken it to that extent at that age i wasn't there i was dealing with the moms and the food and so i didn't even see it happen but she did and i was so grateful to her for telling me and she was blown away like from an early age we can say "You're, you're all about your guests when there's somebody here it's Right. And then they enjoy and letting it. No, like, you know, hey, you know, if there's someone new, it's okay to say that out loud to your children. You know, we're going to a gathering. If there's someone new, you know, make sure they feel welcome. Introduce them to your friends and, and, and model that for them, right? Walk up to the new homeschool mom and say, hi, I'm Lisa. I'm Maureen. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad to meet. Let me, let me introduce you to everybody. And yeah, that's a great point. That's part of hospitality too. We were talking about keeping a clean house, but what also about making people feel welcomed in that way. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah. So, um, I, I have a point of curiosity. How about husbands? What do we, <laughs> how, how can they help? <laughs> how can they help? Well, I mean, you know, in what way? So I mean, help keeping the house tidy. I mean, yeah, are welcoming just, people, yeah, they, they need to be open, right. To hospitality mm-hmm. too. I mean, um, 
you know, my husband's kind of an introvert and he's married to me who loves to entertain <laughs> and, and he's never complained. He's always helpful. Um, uh-huh. He'll usually go out and mow the lawn or something. Uh-huh, <laughs> if we have company sweet. coming, right? He, he, he likes to go and do outdoor things. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think one thing that, you know, we need to keep in mind is, you know, what we talked about at the beginning, right? Is it possible to homeschool and have a perfect house? And dads need to kind of be on board with that. I saw a talk when I first started homeschooling um, at, at a kind of this big general homeschool conference. It wasn't a Catholic homeschool conference. It was um, Christian homeschool. Well, not in Catholic Christian homeschool conference. But anyway, this dad gives this talk. And he's telling these women, you need to challenge yourself to keep your house clean and um, perfect. And, you know, these people who tell you that it doesn't have to be perfect. And that you can't homeschool and do that. They're just, you know, it has to be done. You have to have high expectations. And I took that to heart and and I tried it and it was exhausting. And (laughs) Mm. I couldn't keep a perfectly clean house and homeschool effectively and joyfully. Mm. You know, he didn't know what, but he doesn't know what that's like. He's not the one at home. Um, You know, I mean, how many times have we heard people say, what do you do all day? (laughs) You know, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's hard. I mean, look, you know, I, I've been in the corporate world, you know, I, I ran a $52 million payroll. I know stress in the workplace. I know what dad's experience. And you know what, what we do at home is just as hard and just as val- more valuable. I'll say it's more value- valuable than what they're doing in the workplace. Mm-hmm. And that needs to be recognized. And I know they're slaying dragons all day for us so we can stay home with our children. And we need to appreciate that and recognize that. But they also have to recognize that we're slaying our own dragons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. And we need support too. So we need, you know, we need to support them and they need to support us. It needs to be mutual. Um, but they need to, you know, when they're home, be helping with the kids and modeling, you know, whether it's house helping with housekeeping or welcoming people into our homes or helping with meal prep. And maybe it's even just something, you know, as simple as taking the kids out. So you have time alone or, you know, my husband would take the kids to adoration every Saturday. And that was my planning time. Mm. Um, You know, when I went grocery shopping was usually with all seven kids, (laughs) you know, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. I mean, it would be nice just to have, um, you know, a husband who can play with the kids sports or help them work on the car. If the dad's doing chores, have the kids helping him do his chores. So you can do some things like grocery shopping. So, yeah, I think dads need to be on board. Um, maybe every dad isn't going to be on board. Maybe now we're going to buy this, <laughs> mm. but as much as possible, we do need to ask for their support and and being able to have a hospitable home. We can't do it all ourselves. Yeah, exactly. You know? And, you know, our favorite hospitable home in our homeschool network, the one that we spent the most time in, they yeah. became like a second family to my only child, you know, who came late in my life after years yeah. of infertility. And I come into homeschooling, and everyone's got these big families. We used <laughs> to, we were still dear friends with these folks, even though she's out of college now. Their house wasn't perfect. We always right. felt like we could be real there. Right. right. Well, it goes back to where, you know, my friend at the very beginning. I think that's, you can be real there. I think that's what it comes down to. And, you know, I'm getting close to being an empty nester. My youngest is starting college today. He leaves for school today. My house is pretty clean and tidy these days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know? A little easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, well, this last Sunday or Saturday, Friday, it was Friday, our pastor came for dinner and I had gotten the house all cleaned and all ready. Well, then my daughter came with the grandkids. I'm like, you know, and we decided to have them stay for dinner. So things were a little bit messy when father came. I mean, right. The grandkids were here all day. In fact, Mary was, you know, picking up and I'm like, don't worry too much about it, Mary. I mean, father understands. Don't yeah, <laughs> don't worry. We had a perfectly fabulous evening. You know, it, it wasn't perfect. Um, I think it was really not perfect because we had originally planned to have father on Saturday and I had planned carnitas and they got changed to Friday and I didn't change the menu. And I woke <laughs> up Saturday morning and realized, oh no, I served my pastor 
meet on Friday. <laughs> I, what was I thinking? I just, my brain just, um, you know, it happens when you hit 60, I guess. So <laughs> I messaged him like, I'm so sorry. I'm, you know. And he texts back and said, oh, God is good. I had a fabulous evening. Don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Like he didn't mention it, right? That's hospitality, right? Um, he could have said, "It's Friday. Why are we having carnitas?" Mm-hmm. No, he was very gracious. He complimented my meal, uh, you know. And again, and meal the dinner was crackpot, mm-hmm. right? I really didn't put a lot of effort. It was absolutely delicious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, oh, those are some of my favorite meals. <laughs> but I put it in the crackpot in the morning. And it's done in the evening. And, you know, Mary and I cut up, you know, tomatoes and, and you know, sauteed some fresh vegetables. We had, you know, so we could have done vegetarian because we had. <laughs> yeah. It also had a vegetable, um, you know, so because we did like a taco bar, right? Mm, anyway, nice. it's easy, right? Taco bars are easy. Potato, baked potato bars, those things are easy. Those are the kinds of things I always like to do for parties, you know, mm-hmm. where you can just kind of. We had a, we had a graduation party once where we did walking tacos. Have you ever done that? No. What is that? Uh, so that's where you get bags of Fritos. So I went to like Gordon's Foods and got 50 bags or I think I got 100 bags of the little snack size bags of Fritos. Uh-huh. And then you just make like taco meat and then all the toppings like your lettuce and your, you know, chopped tomatoes, salsa, cheese, whatever. And then you put it in the bag with the Fritos <gasps> and you eat it with a fork. <laughs> Now that is scruffy. I would say it's scrappy. That's scrappy hospitality, <laughs> right? Plastic I love it. Four. They're using the, a bag. I love it. You can just send away. all the kids out into the yard and put a barrel out there right. for the trash. It's just like go right. out. Have Fritos are gluten free, so my celiac kid could eat it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was I so simple. It. No I hope work everybody's at all. feeling like they have permission now <laughs> to be themselves. Right. That was the funnest party. It was. You know. You can. <laughs> You don't have to be fancy and have fun. You can have bags of Fritos with taco meat. And mm-hmm. Just say a little bit <laughs> too, Maureen, before we wrap up. Tell us a little bit about anything that, you know, you've seen or experienced of people who just don't have help at home, whether they have, you know, really young kids or they're not well. Yeah. Or what do you do if there's just no help? Yeah, you know, uh, there may be times in your life you know, when entertaining just is impossible, right? Um, and and you may be the person going to other homes and, and, ser- and serving hospitality that way. Maybe it's, you know, visiting and complimenting their home and, and not judging them and being kind. And, um, you know, maybe it's even serving at a soup kitchen with the kids beside you. You know, my, my dad used to work at a, you know, um, volunteer soup kitchen. We would go into town. He lives in, in another state. He'd take my kids with him. So learning hospitality that way, even if you can't bring them into your home. Um, But please don't hesitate to reach out for help if you need it. Reach out to extended family. Reach out to your local homeschool community. Reach out to your parish if you really need help. Um, You know, or you could even have hired help. You know, I had a little 12, 13-year-old girl, homeschooled girl, many years ago when the kids were little, who just worked a few hours a week for me as a mother's helper. You know, back in those days, you know, you only had to pay them like $2 an hour. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what the going rate is these days, but um, it was really nice. She based, she played with the kids. She was very engaged and I could get things done around the house, you know, or, you know, work on, on, um, you know, my homeschooling ministry, whatever. And that was really helpful. So, you know, if you really can't get help, there are other ways to teach hospitality to your children um, out in the community. But if you want to do that in your home, don't hesitate to reach out. If you want to have people to your house and you don't have any help at all, well, have them bring the food, you know, have have a buffet and everyone brings a dish. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I I have so many fond memories of homeschool gatherings in the church basement where everyone brings a dish. Oh, yeah. You know, and those are the best meals and it doesn't have to be planned. We always did it. Um, you know, you never knew what people were bringing. You might end up with three, you know, macaroni and cheese dishes, mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're all a little different and, yeah. and it's fun. And yeah. It's just having time together to play, you know, and then the kids will go out and play in the playground and, you know, the moms would sit and chat and, 
Those were great times. Yeah, and like, yeah. well, we think nothing of meeting in the park where everyone brings their own lunch. We, yeah. My mother-in-law in her 80s and 90s, she's now 98 and a half, when, her, when she and her friends visit each other in their homes, everyone brings their own lunch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I've been to homeschool gatherings like that where everyone brought a lunch and you went to Sue's house and everyone's got their packed, their little cooler or their bag lunch. And, and you have fun. No one complains. Yeah. Exactly. It's still a great time, you know. So, yeah, if you really want to entertain and you don't have time to make a meal, you know, you can always put a pot of coffee on and have someone stop at Dunkin' Donuts on the way if you have to. Mm. And, and I love what you're together. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And something really beautiful happens when we're together. And the thing that you keep referring to as well, being the person that goes into someone's home is also hospitality. When we're not hypercritical of ourselves and our children then go into someone else's home, they're not locked and loaded to criticize. It teaches them to be very accepting and charitable of others as well, which I think is a great gift. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> mm. yeah. Any final thoughts for us as we uh, wrap up? Um, you know, we always had that house, you know, in that yard where everyone gathered. It, it's just who we were, right? I mean, it was always filled with neighborhood kids, um, homeschooled friends. And, you know, I, I still love doing that. And, you know, like we said, it doesn't mean putting on a fancy meal. It may mean everyone bringing a dish to share, um, if it's impromptu, it may mean stopping and getting carry out on the way home from church, you know, um, you know, you invite some friends over after church, you get home and everyone does the five minute tidy, <laughs> make sure there's toilet paper in the bathroom, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and you're set. You know. Yeah. 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 Just don't wait till everything's perfect to invite over friends, you know, um, local community is really, really important when you homeschool, um, I don't know how I could have homeschooled as successfully as we did if I didn't have those local friends and those local clubs and mom gatherings and all that. So um, it's important. Hospitality is really important, even more so maybe when you're homeschooling. Yeah. And and the thought just comes to me, we may entertain angels unaware. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Right. Is that Ephesians? Where is that from? But yeah. I don't remember. It just popped into my head. Right. (laughs) You you just never know. Um, I'll I'll close with a really quick story. So we had uh, a little girl next door to us who her grandmother was helping raise her. And this young girl would go with us everywhere to all these homeschool things. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, she, she didn't, she was an only child. She really didn't have, you know, close family. And she ended up going everywhere with us. And, um, you know, they, I would find myself babysitting her unexpectedly. Um, and I was kind of getting tired of it. I was at the point where I was like, I need to tell this mom that, you know, she can't just <laughs> leave her kid with me. <laughs> and I was at a homeschool gathering with this child and my, my, my children. And someone said to me, I love how you bring her with you everywhere. Mm. You know what? When I was little. I was that child. I was an only child. I came from a non-Christian home, but there was this Catholic family next door with all these kids. And they always made me feel so welcomed and invited me into their home and took me places with them. And I'm Catholic. I'm who I am today because of that family. Wow. So what you're doing is really beautiful. And it was a wake up call to me to stop worrying so much about me and, and whether or not, you know, my time is being impended upon and really show, you know, one person a little extra kindness. Mm. That's hospitality. I think Mm, that's just gorgeous. And you're also identifying something else that I think is important to notice as we try new things. And that is when you experience that kind of acute discomfort, you're discovering a growth edge in yourself, that that's a place where God is calling you to maybe stretch your heart a little. Right. Because it wasn't any more work to bring her with us. But, you know, the world tells us that, you know, me time, it's all about me. And and, and I was getting <laughs> kind of irritated. And yeah, it took that. It was God placed that woman in my life to make to wake me up and make me realize this little act of kindness can make a huge difference in someone else's life. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Maureen. This has just been a great topic, and I know it's going to resonate with a lot of people. And and maybe they'll write to you at homeschoolconnections.com and share their <laughs> stories, too, and we can do an episode about it. But yeah. thank you, everyone, for being with us. Uh, it's always good to have these conversations. God bless you. And thanks again, Maureen. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Hi, this is Chantal with From Ideal to Real, offering personal mindset coaching and inspirational tips to Catholic homeschool moms. Welcome, my friends, to another year of many spotlight features here at From Ideal to Real. I'm so glad you're here. If there's anything you need to hear right now, it's that you and your family are going to be just fine. (laughs) God knew from all eternity that you'd be facing the stress the sorrows, the chaos, the uncertainties that you are right now. He also sees your jittery enthusiasm as you try to pull together an amazing year. I know you're doing this for your kids. It's going to be great. He sees the hours you've put into outlining curriculum, dancing through the web of technology, talking to your fellow homeschool moms, comparing yourself and your philosophy of schooling to everyone else. He sees your beautiful laid out spreadsheets and schedules, and he senses your doubt. And he knows all your mindset drama. Just remember that all these thoughts that are tugging on your mind right now can be offered and transformed. After all, you are your best coach. So take a minute, sit on the couch when you find that rare silent window and ask yourself, what thoughts are driving my behaviors right now? Am I peaceful, confident, surrendered? Am I enthusiastic? Or am I fearful, anxious, apprehensive, doubtful of my own capacity? Put your hand on your heart and ask God to speak his truth into your thoughts. I suspect he will remind you ever so gently that he is masterfully crafting your world for your maximum holiness and eternal glory. And that means your kids' lives as well. Forming your family well to trust him and see through the enemy's thick layer of fear is all that matters. Okay, so that's the ideal side of it. Here's the real side of it. Hinge moments, like we're in right now at the beginning of a school year, or a big move, or an unexpected pregnancy, or an illness, or financial stress, or an encounter of grief, right? Any life transition, these hinge moments are taxing on our family life, our home life, our peace, and our communication if we don't anticipate the squeeze. So here are three practical tips for you to use for any hinge moment of life. Number one, (laughs) and this is from personal experience, when under stress, we tend to misplace the things that are most important to us, like our kids or our keys. Uh, So maybe don't put lanyards or tiles on your kids, (laughs) but seriously consider utilizing things to help you keep track of things. I recently went through this with a move where I lost my wallet. And as a result, I put lanyards on my keys and a tile on my wallet. And that's how we do things practically to help mitigate high stress moments. Tip number two, the principle that we are always better behaved when our friends are around is so true in high stress moments. So as you launch your homeschool this year, consider inviting a fellow homeschooler into your space. Your kids will be more responsive. Your creative juices will flow more easily and tempers and pouting and squabbles, all that stuff will be diminished. I promise. And then number three, utilize simple tools like the notes app or Google calendar to keep everybody on the same page. I know I've resisted this for years, but doing a daily recap and look ahead before your final examination of conscience each night will spare you lots of drama. So remember, homeschooling is a tremendous gift to your children's formation, the future of their freedom, and most especially, their relationship with the Lord. Dive in with your eyes open and know that God really likes, He really, really likes it when His children do hard things. So you can do it. My name again is Chantal Howard, and you can find me at chantal-howard.com. That's C-H-A-N-T-A-L-H-O-W-A-R-D.com. 
Come find me there and let's discover how we can work together to help you overcome the obstacles that are keeping you from the life that God is calling you to. And that's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com. Be sure to subscribe to Homeschooling Saints and leave us an honest review. God bless you and thank you for joining us.